done. It is Kaz from In The Trenches with Kaz, and we are live. We're here to speak about the Marian reforms, okay, 107 BC, when a guy called Gaius Marius completely changed the way the Romans did business. Otherwise, he knew they'd go poof into exit or disappear, fail to be an empire, so to speak, or actually go from a republic to an empire. And I think it's time for a reformation, a reform of the Australian army. We change with technology when equipment comes in that's new, when tactics are new. So we also need to look at our organisation. That's what we're going to do tonight. If this is your first time here, subscribe to the channel that subscribes to you. And hopefully you look at some of the seven points with one bonus thrown in, so stay to the end, and tell me if you agree with it. If this is not being watched live, then put a juicy comment down below. And if you're a military member, take these points you know, through your chain of command and see if you can make a difference from within because the rot is at the top. It's not at the bottom. And I hope that all of those serving and the families of the serving still remember, if you take away the politics, we're a very professional, proud, okay, army and we do things right and we help more people than we hurt. So let's see who we've got here tonight. Okay, we've got Peppers here. We've got Dave D here, Alec G. We've got uh, Jamie. G'day, mate. How you going, James? You've got Colby. Uh, Trap fit. How you going, mate? Julia sees that you can't go past Rome. And just a little bit of uh, one. I know that I'm getting a little bit older, team, but I'm going to get a tattoo soon. It's going to have divine wind in it, the Japanese, okay, which is also what uh, kamikaze means. Uh, there's also going to be poppies in there. There's going to be some Roman theme to it. And it's going to go over my heart, my left part of my chest, down past my elbow, etc., to cover up this lesbian bloody armband I've got, while also displaying some of the names of Julius, okay, Bernadette, okay, um, Amalia and Grace from Rwanda that we lost. It's also going to have my brother, who I never got to meet, and my grandfather, the best of the casuals that I never got to meet, and they're all going to be on it. Mr. C, g'day, buddy. How you going? Jennifer G, g'day, mate. I bet it's hot up there. Uh, governor's belligerent, uh, occupational, no doubt about it. Okay. Connor, so Rexona, I need some, actually. Uh, Kaz just got off uh, of your Zero Limits episode. That's awesome, Rexona. I hope it didn't uh, smell too bad, and it sounds like you've got the cure for that. Um, having said that, there's another um, debrief that's coming out with Matty Morris from Zero Limits will be coming up real soon. And I hope you enjoy that. Um, off to Kapuka in eight days, says the rat peen. <laughs> that's a small peen there. All the best, mate. Um, anyone that is going for the forces or looking at going to the best career in the world, which is not replicated by anything in civilian life, jump on the bat phone. The link is in the comments. And from there... You know, we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation to make sure you get there with less hiccups. Well done. Um, well done, Rat. Can we get some thumbs up for the Rat, for the Rodent, for the Vector? Um, also, we've got Coral Platoon at the School of Infantry right now. Right now, we've got some great guys in the School of Infantry. We're about to step out tomorrow morning, and they're going to go and do their defensive operation the hardest week of the culmination of training in the School of Infantry will the penultimate activity before the hardcore, which you get the skippy badge straight after that. So they're stepping out tomorrow. You're not going to get any sleep for the first 36 hours. And meritocracy matters because if you don't get down, you don't get down, if you know what I mean. And even then, you're going to swear a G hat on your hands. You know, you're going to feel like you've never worked hard, like you've never had less sleep. And you're going to maybe even think, I don't want to be anymore. I wish I could sex change so I didn't have to dig down as far. But that's not the case. Sarah Sands, good day, mate. Double the thumbs there, wing nuts. Uh, still waiting myself 14 months now. You've got you to keep ringing them, man. You've got to keep ringing them. When in doubt, again, get on here and let me help you. Um, team, all right. We're going to put the fitness test up there for the UK, which is going to be the answer to what I believe the fitness needs need to be for Australian forces, all forces, Army, Air. Oh, okay. We'll leave the Air Force and the Navy out of it. Right? But what we're going to do is I believe that get rid of the BFA, get rid of the PFA, and this should be it because this is the culmination of what you do in a field environment. 
that will separate those that can from those that can't. But let's get to it. Bam. Hi from Gallipoli Batoon. Boom. Well done, Gallipoli Batoon. I hope there's a few years there. Let's see some subscribe, subscribes happen. I'm there. Um, any one of you can reach out to me, straight out to me, and I'll do a conference call with all the guys in your section when you need it. Gallipoli Batoon, for those of guys that don't know, is the holding platoon for the guys about to go into session, now, where it's all about to start. Rilla B, good day, mate. Got my psych at the end of, the, of January. Remember to walk in like this, you know, and uh, they'll let you in. Okay, when in doubt, think you're considering being uh, transgender, and they'll probably go, we need a quota of those, and they'll probably speed you up as well. Um, 46 blokes, one chick in Glipley platoon, platoon. There's going to be a lot more soon, mate, as the platoon start to march out of Kapuka. Righto, let's get into the first one, shall we? So we're all about positivity here, aren't we, team? We're all about positivity. So we're going to make some change, give seven steps plus one extra step on what would make the army better almost immediately. And we're going to explain that. Before we do some factors, there's 27,000 people in the Australian army in the, in the complete ADF. 57,346 with Army Reservists, 32,049 because one just got out. Um, we've got some problems in there with the amount of positions, with the amount of numbers, with the amount of pay for certain individuals. And we're going to go into that. But the very first step, and I'll try to keep these in some semblance of order except for number seven, which should have been at the start. Okay, Simon Powell and the Peppers. Um, Glippy Platoon, are you watching? Complete military position numbers to audit to slimline reduce redundant positions. So what we need, I believe, put a thumbs up if you agree, like any organisation, we need an independent entity, you know, that is designed by the government, not by the Chief of the Defence Force, okay, which might have cookbooks at the moment, to go into the Australian Army, Air Force and Navy and go, give me a look at the position numbers. Why have we got 58 generals? Okay, but we've only got one regiment of infantry. That doesn't make sense at all. And why are they paid nearly four times their uh, counterparts in other countries? So 58 generals. Um, what's that guy doing over there? What is his job? What's that colonel's job? Couldn't that be replaced by someone from APS on half the price of that? Does this person even see private soldiers anymore? What is their function? You know, go in there, toss it up. That fat bastard over there, what are they doing? Couldn't they be an APS civilian role? As a matter of fact, could all clerical people within the Australian Army be replaced by APS members? Could we inject some of those into rifle platoons? You know, we'll get that in a further point. But someone needs to go in and look at all of the numbers and say of the 27,000 that are in Army, I'll stay within my lane, how many of them are actually not a cookbook position that has no function, but they're there for the rest of their life and no one actually knows why he's working in the cellar, so to speak, yeah, on massive taxpayers' dollars. Great history after the rat cats, love it. Dave D, assessment day in two weeks. I believe I'm ready mentally. Uh, Dave, Dave P, sorry. Just uh, not ready on my fitness. That That's on you. Improve your fitness, improve your sex life. Do it today, do it tonight. If you're in jail, break out. Okay, uh, what would make the army better? Give it to the Raffies. We, we'd get run over by every country on earth if we did that. Remember, Raff has no standards, you know, which is a standard in itself. You know, but we love our pilots, you know, and we need them on that wall. Uh, so that's the first one. We need someone to go in and look at the complete positions, work out what is right, what is termite ridden, you know, what needs to go. You know, and that's where you find out how many people we really have that are capable of hitting a target, that are capable of passing a fitness test, so to speak. The metrics. Is there any thoughts on that one? I guess not. Okay, let's have a look at number two. Well, I create a fast track and simplified recruiting system, including federal upfront cash grant incentive payable on completion of basic training. I fucking hate people that quit. I fucking hate it. I've quit heaps of times myself, but not in the military. <laughs> um, but even if you quit smoking, you know, you know, one likes a quitter. Uh, right. 
So fast track the recruiting system, which means you go in there and in two days, all your medical's done, all of your aptitude test is done, all of your interviews are done. The pathologist takes your piss right there if there's a problem or your blood test right there if there's a problem. And then you get told traffic light, green light, good to go. Okay, what's the next one? Orange light, pending blood test, pending further results. Red, sorry, either come back in a year, you're not ready, okay, or don't come back at all. Okay, that simple. So you get an answer so we're not stringing you along towards a career you're never going to have either. That's incredibly um, uh, destructive to people's psyche to keep them on the line if that's not the case. You know, they can take it. Let them know. Love that one too. Thank you. Wing nut. Fast track for sure. Yep. G'day, Mr. Buccarini from up north. You know, police officer, soldier, prison guard, YouTuber, and all around good bloke. And some would say good in bed too, but that's probably him that said that. And it was on the toilet door. So what are we talking about, the, uh, the, the cash grant incentive? Well, the USA do it. So basically what can happen is you can end up ultimately signing on your life away, so to speak, for longer service than what you're actually uh, ready for because you'll get more money up front. But you've got to pay it back if you don't actually pass. So instead of having all these quitters at Kapuka, which it should be impossible to, to, to fail Kapuka outside injury, you know, because you've already passed all the metrics to get in there, then what's wrong with giving fifty thousand dollars or forty thousand dollars to a soldier that goes into his bank account the day that he finishes successfully his kapuka? Why not? Because guess what? They know then that there is something other than just I'm not very good at this to keep them there. You know? I don't know. Just a, just a thought. The Americans do it, works for them. Sometimes they buy a car that looks like shit, you know, before it's even time to get out. Yes, great to improve and make uh, better men of soldiers. How about looking after them when they leave? We're going to get to that point there, Billy. I hope Quinny's doing well, mate. Spooky boy, uh, with that cash grant and uh, longer service impact wage while well in. No, 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 you'd still get that while you're in. We're going to get to another point that's very very dick hardening, exciting that's coming up, even if you don't have one. Okay, so that's something. Another incentive, another tick to put in the box. Because you've got to remember too that a lot of young people get in, you know, and they don't learn about anything to do with economy. You know, so if you gave them that money and they had uh, potentially uh, financial um, lessons financial advisors that spoke to them about different ways of investing money. Instead of just buying a car and then being in horrible debt, you know, then some people would invest that money, you know, and then over that 10 years or 20 years, which we'll get to in a moment, that 40 grand might be worth $400,000. So it's all about empowering, weaponizing financially a way that a soldier can get ahead and then ultimately get out and be successful in his afterlife. And we'll get to that. Nick, uh, looking to sign up for next year, looking forward to it. Nick, we're looking forward to you doing it too. But let's get to the third point for those that want to watch this in a fast fashion. Bam, bring back honourable and dishonourable service as a government record. Your record in the military should be following you after military. It should be giving assistance to you with your next life, whether you do the four years, okay, whether you do 10 years, whether you do 15, whether you do 20, okay? But there should also be dishonorable service. So if you get caught smoking pot, if you get caught doing drugs, you know, if you get caught doing this, that, or the other, you know, you can actually have your record saying dishonorable service. You know, although that's going to be um, uh, something bad for you in the future. Oh well, oh well. You knew the rules before you got in. People can handle rules no matter what they are, as long as they know the rules. But if you turn it the flip side and say it's written down that it was honorable service. And you got out after um, contributing in a capability plus for the military organization. And this is going to go with you to an off ramp to other organizations. That could be awesome too. Now, brother, that's bonkers. Hey, mate, from Vic, and have my assessment coming up later this month in Melbourne. What uh, What's a tip for completing my assessments? 
The best way for assessments, if you've watched all my videos, mate, is honestly get on the bat phone. You know, get on there. We have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. We talk about where you're at. You ask me targeted questions. I answer those questions that you can't get done from recruiting. You know, 24-year veteran in the Australian Army, you know, I can help you out. We've helped thousands of people out. I was talking on this phone less than two minutes before this started with people that are about to do their defensive activity before culminating from the School of Infantry, you know, in about 10 days' time. Fantastico. So bring back honourable service and dishonourable service so people know, did you serve? Okay, but was it honourable or were you a piece of shit? Did you get kicked out for administration because you couldn't pass a fitness test? We need to know these things. Thanks for that, Simon. The, uh, the link is there for those that want to come over to Patreon and get that inside edge. And we've got Mr. Frady95, A tier one field days, uh, tax-free, same as deployments. Um, no. Add a bonus for reducing malingering. I like that. I do like that. But there's other ways to punish a malingerer, mate. Many ways. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next one. Number four. Ah, 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 ah. They call him count because he loves to count. Okay. The implementation of extended tactical command positions for combat officers and NCO. Sorry for putting officers in the lower. Text. Hey, Daz, how you going there, my man? A four-year service is uh, where we start talking incentives. Now, we need to have it at the start as well. The US do it, and it works for them. Get them in the door, and then close the door behind them. Yep. Okay. Um, so what do I mean by that? So there is a level of diminished returns for rank. Okay. It normally is major. Once you become either a field major or not. You know, whether you're going to go higher that or not. But once someone goes above major, you'll never see them again. And no one knows what they do if they do anything other than preparing themselves for a political career afterwards or to go and walk for another organisation for one of their friends. Mates for mates, officers are fucking bad at it. They really, really are, you know, good at looking after each other. The big, the, the boys club. So what I propose is when people say they want to join the army to command, let's hold their feet to the fire and let them do just that. But it's going to be great for them. Imagine someone goes in to be a platoon commander because they want to have direct command of soldiers, Australian soldiers, the best soldiers in the world, okay? So say to them, you have the option, and it should be you stay a lieutenant for 10 years. That should be a 10-year grind. Okay, before going for captain, which is all about administration, understudying the, the major, the tactical major, which controls three session, uh, platoon commanders. But if you went in there, you know, and it should have second lieutenant bring that back. But what happens is when you become a platoon commander, you should get tabs. And it should be for every year or every two years, there is a tab on your uniform, again, like the US military gets, to allow people to understand what level you know, of training you're at. Are you a first tab lieutenant, second tab, third tab, fourth year, or fifth tab? which is 10-year lieutenant. But each tab, you get pay rises. You get certain benefits that come with that command, but it keeps you down on the coalface, you know, commanding. It allows you to get comfortable within your style. You know, it means you don't have to recruit, you know, probably 10 times less officers, paying 10 times less officers, keeping them in command positions letting them ferment and actually become commanders, okay? And then after that, they can choose, no, no, I'm good, I'm out. But one of the things could be, should be, if they want to be an officer, an officer should never be allowed to do a BFA at a level that is above an 18-year-old soldier. It should always be pill one as an 18-year-old soldier so that he actually can avoid ever being, you know, less fit than the organisation he's commanding. Yep. Mr. Buck, NCO is a rank below Warren Officer Class 2. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, it's a Warren Officer Class 2 as well as an NCO as well. Um, but I believe the same for session commanders. A session commander should be able to stay as a session commander for 10 years if he wants to. He never asked to get in and start fucking putting... Uh, inputs into a computer. Neither did a platoon sergeant. The benefit to the organisation is their wisdom, 
the lessons, their skill, their experience. They should be outside with the soldier, big brother style, working on their franchise, one section, two section, three section of the second platoon, alpha company, second battalion, the best battalion in the world, led by the best or supported by the best platoon sergeants ever existed, sitting right here. You know, I was a Zulu platoon sergeant too, which is weird because I'm white. Probably a version of blackface right there. That case has a potty mouth. He does sometimes, mate. What call it spice or GST. Okay, so that one. So NCOs and officers should be allowed to stay where they want to as a tactical commander and support to a tactical commander as a platoon sergeant. Get him out of the office. How do you do that? APS. Get someone who is not getting paid the same wage as, as, as a soldier, a civilian that sits in the platoon office, wearing their fingers away, doing all of the course nominations, doing all the pay, doing all the movements. So soldiers, when they're not doing push-ups and they're not in the field environment and they're not cleaning a gas piston on the cement pretending they're not, then they should be going home, spending time with family, getting ready for the next fight. The role of the infantry to seek out and close the enemy, to kill or capture him, to seize and hold ground, to repel attack by day or night, regardless of season, weather or terrain. Your job is not to be going towards elite fitness. Your job is to get to a position, then hold that position of effectiveness, of capability, until the glass smashes and you're required to do it. Yep. No one can maintain all year round 100% fight preparation uh, at, at a level that is not going to destroy their carcass. Right. Roxanne, 100% agree. Get officers out of the office. Absolutely. You know what? They would love it. Almost every officer believes the best time of their career was when they were a lieutenant. But they get pushed out of there after two years. And then they go to support company or end up dead in Singleton or end up in Kapuka or somewhere like that. And they're not learning anything about command there. All right. So that's another one. Give incentives for the right people to stay at the lower ranks. Slow down the recruitment of officers. We don't need anywhere near as many. There's 219 officers for every 260 soldiers. That's a fucking disgrace. Absolute disgrace. 58 brigadiers. 22 major generals. Five lieutenant generals. Why? Way too many. Way too many. Morale keeps people in. You know, hard training, good training. You know, mateship keeps us in. So let's get to the next point. Implementation of forged bonds in accordance with exchanges with coalition partners for diversity of training. Now, this is one of the few times I actually like talking about diversity because the army is full of diversity. Anyway, and I'm not talking about the colour of your skin or that sort of shit, but that's sort of there too. Um, so what we should be doing is starting some partnerships. I heard something fantastic on a video a couple of days ago. I'll just have a drink out of this pedigree bottle of Coca-Cola today. It looks a little bit like the San Francisco 49ers. Who watched the Super Bowl today? Pretty good. Overtime. Went in overtime. Hmm. Hit the like button if you can, team. Hit the Patreon button if you dare. So what's this one? So I'll give you one example. We should be working with the UK, sending a rifle company over there all the time with our attachments, all of our support, you know, all of our logistical support as well. Take them with us. Compare notes. Use their vehicles. Use their fuel. Use their training facilities. You know, use their wives. Okay, have a good time. See their cultures, eat the cheese, do everything we have to do, but train hard against them, compete against them so they can see who Australians are as well. Okay, what we have done in the past is Gold Eagle, where we go over and we do this with the Marines, with the uh, USMC over in Hawaii, and also the Army at Schofield Barracks. Right? We also go over to Malaysia, you know, but there's not enough exchanges in the Australian Army where history starts today. Every day history starts, it's not too late to start anything, okay? So if I was in the military now and I was a commander 
I'd look at forging a bond with a unit that's overseas. What's the cost analysis? What's the benefits of training with these coalition partnerships? Starting a competition against them that now becomes an annual event. We go there, they come here. So every company at any give every battalion at any given time has got a, an entire company of either US soldiers or British soldiers, you know, or New Zealanders, you know, Canadians maybe, you know, and get it done. You know, give people a reason to go in. Okay, we're in peacetime. Yeah, I know. But I'm also going to Hawaii in four months' time to go and compete against USMC on the footy field. I'm going to do that. So that's a way of learning about weapons, learning about other equipment, forging friendships, relationships, and people staying in the army, you know, to experience other cultures and travel and adventure, which is the main reason people join in the first place. G'day, Spoons. How you going, mate? Petrus Simonis. Hi, mate. Mr. Buckery and Dave D, give yourself an uh, uppercut. No, step six, we're almost there, and then we're going to watch this video. Step six, one of the most important ones that will keep a motherfucker in, okay? It'll keep someone in, and it'll also allow parents to say, what a great idea this is. Implementing all of the things before this is compulsory 20-year retirement. So your career, you know from the start, can only go for 20 years. So you don't end up being that fetid piece of, Cheese in the bottom of the the bloody uh, sort it out with the game of footy. Okay, um, so you don't end up being fermented and useless to the organisation, and then go back to the point where honourable, dishonourable. Okay, or the overview of the military. Are you a wasted space that could be replaced by someone that can do the job one hundred percent right now? So twenty years, so you can see the finish line. Retiring from military with a pension and an off-ramp to priority civilian roles. Now, that could be high school teacher. Okay, that would be excellent to have people that have actually had a life that it can inspire young men to be all that they can be in the absence of fatherhood, you know, which is happening in Moree or wherever they come from. You know, maybe it's to go in then and assist in orderlies in hospitals, you know, using your people skills and your aggressive testosterone collection to use the people of mental health to open the, the, the rotating doors with their heads. Bring back land grants for veterans, possibly as well. Create a new, um, ask for what towns would like to billet a part of land out where uh, either tiny homes or accommodation or uh, a military retirement area can be used. And that can be extended also to police, fire brigade, nurses, etc. cetera. Wait a sec. Getting trolled by Carl P. What happens? Uh, I can't see what that is. Is a love heart in the way? I don't know. So, if you're going to open the door with an incentive, close it with another incentive. So, when people have done 15 years, they go, "Oh, I'm five years away from doing my pension." Okay, let's do that. Who does this well? The UK. Yep. And what it should be is when that comes through, maybe it's not taxed. How about that? It's not tax, but you can also go back to work. So instead of actually going back and trying to get something that is on a similar pay grade, because you've already got the pension, what you might do is go, you know what? I love people, man. I'm going to go and get a coffee van. You know, I'm going to go and do something that doesn't pay a lot, but it makes me feel good. You know, my chance to slow down a little bit, enjoy life a little bit do something back for my family that have been so loyal to me over those postings, something like that, you know. So the bookend. Let's get another one. Uh, X mill has land for training youth. Yeah, I don't really want to work with troubled youth too much. My patience, I'd want to twist their head off to tell you the truth. Complete leadership overhaul. That needs to start now. We need to stop the rot at the top because when you look at the top and then you see within our military that we've got transgender people in there, that we've got the standards sliding everywhere, it's time for someone at the stop at the top to go. Stop it. You don't drop standards. You drop the standards, then we may never recover from it. You might be known as the person who actually led to the demise of a nation because you dropped the standards and then we weren't really.
ready to bite the whoop when he appeared. So complete leadership overhaul, get rid of the majority of uh, officers' red tabs at the top, you know, keep the tactical commanders down, keep the 20 years as the time of service, you know, except for ex- uh, some people that have actually achieved uh, a greater good or shown some sort of leadership beyond the leaders that surround them, remembering that managers kill leaders because managers are after the fame. They're after the political uh, career that follows. Get rid of the manager that kills the leaders out of nepotism because he knows that they're better than him. Get rid of them. Okay, and the last one, the last one, the GST. Create an active multimedia channels for units and see what blossoms from that. Naturally, when you press upload, you've already done the vetting. You've made sure you're not going to give the army a bad reputation. What we can see is this generation is so good at multimedia, you know, that they could be a free recruiting tool themselves where characters start to develop within a battalion environment and people watch that channel and then they want to go to that unit because they want to see Dave D or they want to see Buckaroonie, you know. They want to see what it looks like as they, instead of being survivor, you're tracking, following a platoon on jungle operations, not speaking to anyone and watching what they do, the blood on their face, 24-hour stream, you know, while he carries his Elon Musk Starlink behind him while he's walking. All of these things put in together, going from the top before we watch this video, okay, complete military position, uh, numbers audit, okay, the audit's done. Bam, fast track to get into the military. Bring back honourable dishonourable service. Implementation of extended tactical command positions for combat officers and NCAs. So they stay in the lower ranks. You don't need to recruit as many. Give them their rewards and we will end up with uh, some organisations that are absolutely tip-top with guys that have uh, have become the best version of themselves and get them out of the office. Okay, implementation of forged bonds in accordance with coalition forces. And let's start history today. Imputation 20-year retirement plan to bookend, okay, the start of the career, which comes with incentives and sign-on bonuses. Complete leadership overhaul to make sure those that are starting the right, maybe they're just tired, you know, that they understand what the off-ramp is and they take it with a little, with a little gentle shove and creative active multimedia channels for units so there's transparency to the military as well. All right. Um, I believe all of these things would be a fantastic way of getting people into the military, and I think it would be a net positive for everyone. Uh, Maverick says, wait a sec, where is Maverick? Okay, so Defence Force have uh, too many dictators and not enough leaders. Is it uh, because the training for different roles is easy for some and hard for others, so it creates a fear? No, it's because uh, RMC... The, um, I don't believe that leadership is one of the tenets that it actually uh, recruits people for. It gets them very young based on their IQ and their ability to pass an OSB, which is run over a computer where it used to be physical. Now, what makes a leader great is he's able to give mission command to other leaders. Instead of being jealous or nepotism of a, a commander that's coming up fast, he should be looking at that, embracing that, amplifying it, identifying it, and allowing that guy to be, to be the best he can be and test him in ways that give him the best chance of being the best he can be. That's what you should be doing. Mission command is the opposite of what you're seeing happen in the Ukraine now, where every time a, a, an order gets done, it goes back to the Kremlin, you know, it gets re-rolled, what do we have to do, it goes out, and then they do what they're told. You know, mission command means that, You know what the end state is. You know what I want to achieve. And if you can achieve it, if you see a play on the field that you can play right now without asking for permission, you know the cost of failure, then go to it. Get it done. Now, 500 square foot lander after five years? No, no. you, 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 You don't deserve anything after five years. It's got to be up in 20 years. It's got to be up in 20. Otherwise, 
would give our whole country away, mate, to tell you the truth. Uh, or people stay in just for there. Uh, Dave says, bring back in-person OSPs. Absolutely. Uh, Petrus says, only son in the family. What do you uh, what do you think, Army? Well, I was the only son in my army, in my family, and I joined, and I went to infantry, embraced the combat corps. When it comes to actual training, right, we talk about this all the time, the PFA. All right, the PFA for Air Force and Navy is so low you couldn't get through solo sex at the standard they are. It is pathetic. People should pay. Okay, uh, the Army. All right, it's still very very hard depending on where you go. Support corps not so much. You cannot say when you serve in the Australian Army now that we are all one army. You can't, and we're not. We should not be scored the same. You've got people that do two years, genders that do two years, and you've got men that do four years. You've got people that at their fitness test, if you did that as a man, you'd be kicked out for incompetence. Okay? You've got that. Righto? We've got support, completely different, everything to combat soldiers. When all the standards are different, and then you end up with commanders that aren't uh, tactical commanders, they're logistic commanders, but now they're in charge of combat troops, that is dangerous. Very dangerous. But when it comes to fitness, you should not be released from Kapuka onto another organization until you have uh, passed a fitness test. This is what the Army fitness test should be, and you don't go to a unit until you passed it. What is that? What's that one? Uh, yeah, okay. So this is a video we're going to watch quickly, and I believe we could just adopt this now. There'd be a lot of people that lead the army because they might be able to do it. Okay, but let's go to the start of this. This only goes for um, a little while. Tell us what you think while I'm looking at your questions. More commonly known as the RFTS, is designed to ensure soldiers are physically capable of carrying out their specific British. military role and duties, irrespective of age, gender or rank. The RFTS consists of six representative military tasks, known as RMTs. These are to be conducted sequentially and are as follows. RMT 1, Loaded March. The test will measure a soldier's... Two seconds. Jay, uh, the trades, fantastic. Engineer Corps, if you go uh, for some of them, you've got to have four subjects that you've passed at uh, year 10 or year 12 level. So it's not easy to get in for many, Okay, especially males that might have. Uh, a lick of ADHD in their system. Aerobic capacity and muscular endurance. Phase one is the loaded march. The loaded march is completed over four kilometers, carrying a combined weight of 40 kilograms distributed through a soldier's essential kit. This includes a Bergen, Webin and weapon. This simulates moving with a soldier's equipment over arduous terrain. Phase two is a movement at speed. This is an individual two kilometer effort march, carrying 25 kilograms. This includes a day sack, webbing, and weapon. This simulates a tactical advance onto an objective or enemy position whilst moving at speed. RMT2, fire and movement. Okay, so we're already seeing now there's a lot of people that have a hell of a lot of trouble in doing that. It's individual, it's timed, okay, and you need to be able to pass it. And it replicates exactly what they're saying, the statement of relevance, why you need to be able to do it, right? And this would be army-wide, support and combat. The test is conducted in two stages and simulates an assault onto an enemy position. This will measure a soldier's flexibility, mobility and muscular endurance. Stage one is the fire and movement. This is completed over a 30 meter marked course. A soldier is to be carrying a weight of 14 kilograms within their webbing and to be in possession of body armor, helmet and weapon. Okay, so this one you're about to see now, this is why I go on so much about push-ups. You know, women only have got to do, I think, 1.4 push-ups. No, no, it's something like fucking 8 or 15 or some shit, you know, um, and they do them very, very poorly and they try to do them on their knees. It's, it's horrible. Well, it's a horror story and I'm not trying else here. But what this is something you learn at Kapuka is fire and movement, which is run down, crawl, observe, aim, fire, crawl. Okay. and that happens every five metres in any assault with every soldier, supposedly. I don't like doing any inverted commas shit for quotes. Everyone is meant to be a infantry 
soldier or a rifleman capable. That's absolute bullshit. They used to have some semblance where they were like 20% of being an infantry soldier because they used to do hard uh, training every single year called IMTs, infantry minor tactics, that every single unit was expected to do. But they've got rid of that. And when they do do it, it's normally the blind leading the blind. So this is very important. And it simulates if you if you can't do push-ups, you can't do run down, cool, observe, aim, fire with your weapon, webbing, and your body armor, PPE ensemble. The 30 meter course will consist of four times 7.5 meter bounds. Each bound will start and finish in the prone position and include a short run in between. A total of 20 bounds are to be completed, covering a total distance of 150 meters. So there you go. Every time you hear the beep. You have to get up, run down, crawl, observe, aim, fire. They're saying 7.5 metres. It's normally five metres, three to five paces and down, okay? That would get very tiring very quickly. Remembering this is not the first activity you've done. This already shows you that most candidates, you know, again, female and support, would have a trouble doing this based on their standards. Stage two is the crawl and sprint. A 15 meter leopard crawl is to be completed and immediately followed by a 15 meter sprint. This is to be achieved in 55 seconds or less. RMT3. There's one gender where they'll all fail pretty much and that was it. That was the activity, you know. Doing the leopard crawl, all this already happens in the PESA. But again, that's already getting pissed on and in some areas it was made too hard at the start, I believe casualty drag. The test simulates where a soldier must drag a casualty into cover whilst under assault. This aim is to measure a soldier's strength, muscular endurance and anaerobic capacity. The casualty drag is conducted over a 20 meter course and is to be completed in a time not exceeding 35 seconds. Soldiers will be carrying 14 kilograms within their webbing and have the additional weight of body armour, helmet and weapon. Whilst so if someone was to say I'm injured permanently so I can't do this test. They're also telling you, I permanently can never help you if you're a casualty. Think about that one for a second, team. Dragging a burden weighing 110 kilograms. RMT4, jerry can carry. The test simulates carrying a stretcher or conducting an ammo resupply in a situation where an evacuation of a casualty is necessary. The aim is to measure a soldier's muscular endurance. Jerry can carry is completed over a 240 meter course and is an individual best effort walk whilst carrying two times 22 kilogram water cans, as well as body armor, webbing, helmet, and weapon. Rest can be taken at an individual discretion by placing the water cans on the floor. However, a time of four minutes must not be exceeded in successfully completing the test. RMT5, vehicle casualty extraction. This test simulates a soldier's ability to successfully extract a casualty from an armoured vehicle or trench. The aim is to measure a soldier's muscular strength. The vehicle casualty extraction is replicated with a 70 kilogram weight attached to a rope. An upright pull type movement is required to perform the task. Soldiers will be wearing body armour and helmet with the weapon slung and must start in the deep squat position. The pull is successfully completed once the legs are fully extended and the soldier is stood in an upright position. RMT6, repeated lift and carry. What does everyone think so far? This seems like a fairly accurate sort of course. You know, it wouldn't be easy. And what would be done is as an entire unit where the commanding officer and the RSM, you know, and that company commander would go and watch his men do it. And there'd be a, a date of each year that it occurs followed by a battalion barbecue, a squadron barbecue, a troop barbecue. But if you can't make it, you know, then you're either going to get an administration or warning or something is coming down the pipeline or if you fail it, you know. No individual favours, no officers getting someone to take them, say, do it by themselves or no one's freaking watching. It gets done as a collective group. And you know what? Maybe it doesn't get done by the unit. Maybe it gets run by PDIs. Maybe it has to be run by PDIs. So there's absolutely no familiarization breeding into the contempt. I like that one. Yep, never assume that you are fit enough before you actually get tested in anything with the military. This test simulates the lifting and carrying of equipment, 
such as the replenishment of stores, the loading of a vehicle or the construction of a defensive position. The aim is to measure a soldier's aerobic capacity and muscular endurance. The repeated lift and carry includes a walk-run element that will accumulate a total distance of 1.17 kilometers whilst lifting and carrying a 20 kilogram burden during 30 meter shuttles. In total, 20 times 30 meter shuttles are completed with the burden at walking pace and 19 times 30 meter shuttles are completed as a recovery run. That wouldn't be easy, would it? Yeah. yeah. It's like you've just been found out that you've been caught cheating and your missus coming home soon, you're getting everything you own and putting it in your van or in the back of your ute <laughs> before she comes home. Soldiers will be wearing body armour and helmet only. RMT6 is the only test that is excluding a weapon. Why? Why is it excluding a weapon? There, there is never a time in your military career, especially in operations, that where you just leave your weapon over in the ULUs and then go and do work parties without it, especially in a field or operational environment. There should be a weapon as well. And that way it'll teach people how to sling their weapon properly. During the RFTS, a five-minute transitional period is afforded between RMTs. For all the people that think that each one of those was like one a day, no, this is in one session, team. Except for RMT3, where a 15-minute break is awarded. These periods are to allow for water breaks and administration, as well as soldiers receiving a detailed brief for the next RMT in sequence. So this is also about um, all about recovery and uh, also for muscular endurance replenishment, which is easy. It takes three minutes for 100% of your creatine phosphate levels within your muscles to refurbish and be able to replicate an activity again to 100%. Okay, so five minutes is fine. Prince. And wouldn't this be great? You'd videotape it if you were the platoon so that you can actually use this as part of, you know, because PEZ, like Dave said, is the same as this pretty much. But this would be part of, a major part, of what your actual uh, reporting period for the year is. If you go an entire year where you can't do this, how can you possibly have a good report? Oh, but I'm injured. Okay, so restricted service. Are you injured that much that you can't do the training, you can't do field? Well, you... Now you're taking up the position of someone who can, so you've got to go. Delicioso. What do you reckon about these, team? Are you digging it? Do you like it? Where this one? Australia's next Chief Defence Force will take one of the world's highest paid military jobs. Now, I don't know how true this is, but this is basically insinuating that the Chief of the Defence Force is on $800,000 plus a year. Now look at this guy. I don't think he's ever been in a battle in his life, but he looks like he's actually worked for Russia, you know, for 67 years. Unbelievable. There we go. Hello, sir. And hello, mate. You still got to give respect, you know, but you wonder what happened. How did it get to this? That's what I always think. Anyway, so I've got too many officers. Okay, so we just had an excellent message from one of our Patreon members who shares the same name as me almost, and um, she says she thinks her husband is a fan says everything you've said relates to being in the fire brigade. Bam. That's because, mister, you know, and thank you for your service, fire brigade heroes on our streets. So same with paramedics, you know, soldiers, some of us are dickheads. Police, a lot of them are dickheads. But fire brigade, love them, okay? Haven't got their calendar, but I like them, respect them. Play this in the background. This is what it's about, meritocracy. If you aren't up to scratch, guess what happens? You fucking die. It's that simple. That simple. I'm just going to get this out of the way. Right. Eh? The battlefield 
and nature will ask all the necessary questions of you. Your fight most of the time will be against the elements more than what it will be against the standards set by the military by those of the enemy. You know, there will be punctuations of combat that happen in the historical timeline, you know, with the generation being classed as basically 20 years. You can do an entire 20 years with no conflict, but you're going to be going somewhere on an exchange. You're going to be doing something where you're coming in face-to-face -face with dangerous, hazardous training, but we need that. You know, I believe the Marian reforms were a great thing and it led to a thousand-year dynasty with Rome. I believe that Australia, you know, we upgrade our technology, we upgrade our um, uniforms, we should upgrade our military system, get rid of the chaff, you know, get rid of the positions that aren't needed, move with the times, keep war fighters training, not doing administration, not sitting and doing paperwork, no. Let them go out and do what they join the military to do. Because you make a mistake with one of them or you turn him into a fat lizard, you know, because he's got every excuse in the world to be able to go, well, dude, I didn't want to sit in an office. I wanted to train. I wanted to be out there and do that. You turned me into this. You know, let's take away their excuses and let them be the best version of themselves. Uh, yeah, mate, it, it is. Jamie Dugan, absolutely, I concur with you, mate. Imagine what the fitness test for these guys. We're going to do a video on the Roman uh, enlistment process. Don't try and look it up. I'll do a reaction for you, and you're going to love it. You have to be nearly six foot to be a Roman soldier. Yeah. Those guys, they signed on for a long period of time, and they worked hard. Okay? First professional armies. But... um. Guys and gals, do you have anything more for me? Is there anything you'd like to talk about? Let's see if there's any uh, awesome questions come in. What is this? If one is on a, a DS pension, can one join the army? DS pension? Uh, disability pension? No. No. I wouldn't imagine so, mate. No. Uh, the military, you've got to remember, you've got to always put yourself on to the other side of the table. And remember, there is nothing that replicates the essential services like fire brigade, police, and army. You know, there is nothing that is similar to it. You need to be able to be physically able to run down claw, observe, aim, fire, you know, to be able to deal with the threat, you know, to be physical, because you're also representing a uniform, you know. If it looks like people can't wear the uniform well, then they'll think that the uniform, that the, the actual organisation is also not something to be proud of. It's a bit different if you're missing a leg and people know that you lost it in combat. Amazing. Okay, to be uh, a bit of fire, so, fight such as long tan, your self-belief and ability under such pressure would be the greatest challenge. Yeah? There's a, there's a time where it's not even courage anymore. It's just, you know, you don't have a choice. You're going to fight until you die, you know, but it just so happens you survive sometimes. It's not your number. Got psychological and medical tests left. The medical test, uh, Senor Ali, can be the scary one, not the psychological, you know, but the medical test can be the hard one for the simple fact that they can find things wrong with your heart murmurs or whatever that you didn't even know you had. So all the best with that, my friend. Hey, there's a good man there. Medical industry, ex infantry, Johnny Diggs. G'day, mate. How you going? It's uh, we're well overdue another conversation, eh? What are your thoughts on the Navy? I love the Navy. If if I wasn't in the Army, I'd be in the Navy. If I wasn't in the Navy, I'd want I'd, I'd want to be in a fire brigade, you know, or I'd want to be a paramedic. But I probably couldn't be a paramedic because it'd upset me too much seeing injured kids. We'd better join the Navy than Army and get a trade. I don't believe in joining the army to get a trade. It, it's join the army, go into a combat role, and then, okay, when it's getting harder and harder to hang on to the to the reins, then go into a trade because then you don't need all the qualifications that you needed to originally join the army or the navy to get in there and do that trade. You know, just join that, go into a combat role, you know, and then from there 
As you get a little bit older, when your bones start hurt a bit more, go into a trade then. Uh, what do we got? Mick Dave. If you're running on muscle memory in battle, many of the greatest stories from people don't have them being brave or heroic, just doing what they do. Yep, absolutely. Um, can we get some thumbs up for Jamie? He's going in on Thursday to go and get his uh, hemorrhoid popped. Okay, not so much. Okay, got my aptitude test coming up. Then, uh, then the new session just start the journey. That's all right, Josh. It's okay, Mr. Adams. All good. We all start somewhere. We all start somewhere. Adam, hemorrhoids. Yep. <laughs> I love it when other people have got them. It's funny. I've had them. They suck. Ration packs. Ration pack cheese. Hmm. Who are these guys? Fighting the Carthaginians. These are the guys I'm painting at the moment. The uh, the actual Republican Romans. You should see them behind me. Amazing. You know, everyone on Patreon gets Romans painted for them. Uh, Raymond. Uh, here he is. Just passed the medical. How long approximately until enlistment? Uh, mate, it shouldn't be much more than two months. You know, it depends on how much of a backload they have of actual Kapuka courses getting run. There should be at least three courses a month going in. Yeah. That's the WEF. What's that, Adam? Okay. Uh, what else did we have here? Honourable, dishonourable. Yeah, rewriting the standards, 20 years. Um, yeah, okay, so at the moment, by what by 2030, they want uh, 80,000 people to be in the Defence Force as opposed to 57,346. You don't have to change many things. You just have to give exposure and transparency to the military, you know, and all of these things can be made possible, all right? Um, at the moment, to have 80,000 people within the military, you know, the, the complete ADF, that's only one in 337.5 people of Australia. One of every 337 people. If we can't achieve that, guess what? You deserve national service. If you're not willing to support the country, if no one's willing to send their sons in, fuck them. Drag them out. Make them serve. You know, Because otherwise we're going to look like a country that, oh, he looks painful. We're going to look like a country that can't protect itself. It's going to look like a sheep inside the paddock waiting to get chopped up. How do you think the future of the ADF will look in five, ten years' times? Is it worth joining? Absolutely, it's worth joining. Do you think numbers will be bolstered in, uh, with competition in the world? Yeah, absolutely. Because one of the things uh, of all the conversations I have on the on the bat phone is most of the people have walked away from it either oh, through the eye through a really good paying job you know, or the mines, or university, or a trade, and said, that's not for me. I need the, pa uh, uh, the, the path less trodden. You know, I don't want to be a civilian. I want to be in something that matters. I want to go to the gym in work time. I want to wear a uniform. I want the Australian flag on my arm. I don't want a welcome to country every time there's a meeting at fucking work, you know. All of these different things. Yep, there's plenty of people that are trying to get in. Uh, okay, Lockley, I'm waiting for my security clearance assessment to be finished. That could take a long time, man. That can You can be in training while that's still going on. Okay, so don't worry about that one too much. Don't worry about that one too much. I'll play this one again because it was pretty good, actually. Hey, there's Noah, the guy that brought the mosquitoes. You know, you should have left them off the ark, I believe, mate. Maybe they crept on. Ranger, the redhead curse, square wheels on his push bike. 100% breeding if they actually tell the truth about the job and not lie, DFR, lie too much. They wouldn't need to if they actually did their job, implemented those seven steps. People would be lining up at the door like they already are anyway. Uh, has the culture problem within Navy been fixed? Uh, I've read a lot about it on Osmil subreddit. I wouldn't read any of that shit, mate. I wouldn't read any of that. 
if someone has been in the military and then they're going to things like uh, Reddit, et cetera, then they probably were rejected from the career they went into and didn't fit in. Might be their uh, associopath. Maybe there was something wrong with them, you know, the squeaky wheel. I'm here because I'm trying to make you have an optimistic look at something that can be your forever job career or for at least 20 years before it gives you all the skills to be the best version of you, have financial backing to be able to get out and then do something else and talk about the times where your best friends, you know, live beside you. Uh, train the Papua New Guinea Army up at uh, Goldie River Barracks was a good experience. There you go, man. Multiculturalism right there. Christopher, hey, Kaz, what are your views on the new law that comes in, uh, came in last month about it being illegal to trade, sell, swap memorabilia from uh, Nazis in World War II? Why? Why not? It's a part of history. Does that mean you can't have something from Genghis Khan, something from Rome? You know what's funny? That bitch from The View, uh, Sonny Hostin or whatever, you know, the one that's always taught about reparations, that every man is bad, that, you know, Republicans are scum, you know, that we should be paying money to people that have never actually uh, come from uh, the sub-Saharan Africa, et cetera, to the US, you know what I'm talking about there. And she just found out with the genealogy test that she actually has those people owned by her relatives in her past. And she now she doesn't know what the fuck to say. Eggs on her face. Do not hold people accountable for history in the lifetime now. Hold them accountable for the actions they have in front of you. That's what I say. Yeah. Uh, where are we? Fight Hub. The best decision I ever made was joining the Army. I like that and being able to serve my country. I'll, I'll uh, be a, a grant to a grunt to the day I die. I believe he's saying, and mate, I wouldn't be doing this channel if I didn't think it was a great idea to join the military. What it gives you, I could not list, and you wouldn't believe me if I did. The class that is constantly offended. Ask for more to make them happy. We'll never be satisfied. We have to nip the woke shit in the butt today. Absolutely. Absolutely. When people with mental health are making demands of those that actually provide their protection and their food and their electricity, it just makes me shake my head. Johnny Diggs, I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't a grunt before. Absolutely. You know, yeah, absolutely. Zane Robinson. Hey, Zane, there you go, mate. 32 months of double denim, loving the team. Bam, that's what it's about. 32 months. Holy shit. Can we get some thumbs up there for Zane? That's insane, Zane. Well done, mate. Well done. Part of the crew. Hmm. Highest rank you can get. They're not letting me unlock new ranks to be able to give you either. Okay, it's got me a listen day on February 20th. Just wondering if I uh, should uh, look out for anything. I, I haven't done a, a call to see if anyone else is joining on that day, but you know, can we get some thumbs up? We've got a whole bunch of people that went today. I forgot to, to mention at the start, you know, they uh, they swore in, did their oath of affirmation today, you know, and they're at Kapuka right now, probably about to uh, do their first phone call for proof of life back to their parents, which will go for 30 seconds or so, and then they'll be in bed, no doonas down there, and then dropping off their last T-bone in the shitter so they can get a little bit of peace between 10 and 6 in the morning. Well done. Guys and gals, let's wrap this one up. Um, I don't actually have anything uh, else for tonight. Adam, uh, think of all the Hill people uh, two or uh, could leave single mothers. Okay. Um, yeah. So nothing else more for you. Just some positive points that hopefully someone in conclusion in the military looks at and goes, now I like two of those seven things. Maybe they're like all seven. If I was the chief of the Defence Force, I'd go, hey, mate, maybe it's time to turn this around. Maybe having some positive things like this video tonight is enough to make some people go, yep, okay, I'm down with that. Uh, keep with this bloke team. Uh, if you're a new ADF interested, people should know the Patreon is worth its weight in gold. Thanks very much for that, Zane. It is. 
Um, and the conversations we have with you guys, it never fails to entertain me or surprise me. It's amazing. What else we got here? Ranger, become a YouTube member. Thank you very much. I'd hate to be in chat and not be green or blue. Blue being our moderators. No expectation of anyone there. Uh, but it's great to have you here. So, guys and gals, go and hug your mum before I do. I hope you have a great day tomorrow. Um, and our country is girt by sea, and it is the best country. But at the moment, we've got rot at the top of every single organisation, every single one except in the trenches with Kaz. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks for being here tonight. Let's be the ambassadors of good news, of faith in our future children's experiences as they protect us, as our bones get sore. And I look forward to showing you or telling you about the news of the new tattoo I'm going to get, which is my midlife crisis coming up real soon before I go on a cruise. Mama, I just killed a man. See us later. Take it easy. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your memberships. Thank you for your polite ability to actually be able to communicate tonight without the vitriol that happens normally in the village soapbox arena. Champions, you should be proud of yourselves. See you later, bucko. See you later, people. Good night, girls and boys.